Remember your mercies, O Lord, and with your eternal protection sanctify your servants, for whom Christ your Son, by the shedding of his blood, established the Paschal Mystery, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be raised high and greatly exalted. Even as many were amazed at him, so marred was his look beyond human semblance and his body beyond death of the sons of man. So he shall startle many nations. Because of him, kings shall stand speechless. For those who have not been told shall see him. Those who have not heard shall ponder it. Who would believe what we have heard? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up like a sapling before him, like a shoot from the parched spirit. There was in him no stately bearing to make us look at him, nor appearance that would attract us to him. He was spurned and avoided by people, a man of suffering, accustomed to infirmity, one of those from whom people hide their faces, spurned, and we held him in no esteem. Yet it was our infirmities that he bore, our sufferings that he endured. While we thought of him as stricken, as one smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our offenses, crushed for our sins. Upon him was the chastisement that makes us whole. By his stripes we were healed. We had all gone astray like sheep, each following his own way but the Lord laid upon him the guilt of us all. Though he was harshly treated, he submitted and opened not his mouth. Like a lamb led to the slaughter or a sheep before the shears, he was silent and opened not his mouth. Oppressed and condemned, he was taken away. And who would have thought any more of his destiny? When he was cut off from the land of the living and smitten for the sin of his people, a grave was assigned him among the wicked and a burial place with evildoers, though he had done no wrong, nor spoken any falsehood. But the Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. If he gives his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life, and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light in fullness days. Through his suffering, my servant shall justify many, and their guilt he shall bear. Therefore, I will give him his portion among the great, and he shall divide the spoils with the mighty, because he surrendered himself to death and was counted among the wicked. And he shall take away the sins of many and win pardon for their offenses. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The responsorial song is, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, rescue me. Into your hands I commend my spirit. You will redeem me, O Lord, O faithful God. Into your hands I commend my spirit. For all my foes, I am an object of reproach a laughing stock to my neighbors, and a dread to my friends. They who see me abroad flee from me. I am forgotten like the unremembered dead. I am like a dish that is broken. Father, Father your hands, hands, I my But my trust is in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. In your hands is my destiny. Rescue me from the clutches of my enemies and my persecutors. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. 
Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your kindness. Take courage and be stout-hearted, all you who hope in the Lord. Father, A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similarly been tested in every way, yet without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. In the days when Christ was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kippen Valley to where there was a garden into which he and his disciples entered. Judas, his betrayer, also knew the place because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas but a band of soldier and God. From the chief priest and the Pharisee, and where they are with a lantern, tortured and weapons, Jesus, knowing everything that was going to happen to him, ran out and said to them, Whom are you looking for? They answered him, Jesus the Nazarene. He said to them, I am. Judas his betrayer were also with them. When he said to them, I am, they turned away and fell to the ground. So he again asked them, Whom are you looking for? They said, Jesus, Nazarene. Jesus answered, I told you that I am. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill what he had said. I have not lost any dough you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a straw, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ears. The slave name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into its scabbard. Shall I not drink the cup that the Father gave me? So the band of Sawyer, the tribune, and the Jewish guard seized Jesus, bowed him, and brought him to Annas first. He was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had counseled the Jews, but it was better that one man should die rather than the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Now the other disciple were known to the high priest, and he entered the courtyard of the high priest with Jesus. 
but Jesus stood at the gate outside. So the other disciple, the acquaintance of the high priest, went out and spoke to the gatekeeper and brought Peter in. Then the man who was the gatekeeper said to Peter, You are not one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slave and the guards were standing around a charcoal fire, but they had met because it was cold and were warming themselves. Peter was also standing there, keeping warm. The high priest wasn't Jesus about his disciple, about his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I have spoken publicly to the world. I have always taught in a synagogue or in the temple area where the Jews gathered. And in secret I have said nothing. Why ask me? Ask those who heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the temple guards standing there struck Jesus and said, Is this the way you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him out to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing there, keeping warm, and they said to him, you are not one of his disciples, are you? He denied and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the one whose ear Peter had cut off, said, Didn't I see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied, and immediately the cock rose. Then they brought Jesus from Caiaphas to the praetorium. It was morning and they themselves did not enter the praetorium in order not to be defiled, so that they could eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and said, What charge do you bring against this man? They answered and said to him, If you were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. At this, Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews answered him, We do not have the right to execute anyone. In order that the word of Jesus might be fulfilled, but he said, indicating the kind of death he would die. So Pilate went back into the praetorium and summoned Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own, or have others told you about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. So Pilate said to him, Then you are a king? Jesus answered, You say I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is the truth? When he had said this, he again went out to the Jews and said to them, I find no guilt in him, but you have a custom that I release one prisoner to you at Passover. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cry out again, Not this one, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a rev revolutionary. Then Pilate took Jesus and had, sent, had him scourged. And the soldier wore a crown out of horns and placed it on his head, and closed him in a purple cloak. And they came to him and said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they struck him repeatedly. Once more, Pilate went out and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you so that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple cloak. And Pilate said to them, Behold, the man. When the chief priests and the guards saw him, they cried out, Crucify him. Crucify him. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. 
I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. Now came Pilate heard this statement. He became even more afraid, and went back into the praetorium and said to Jesus, Where are you from? Jesus did not answer him. So Pilate said to him, Do you not speak to me? Do you not know that I have the power to release you, and I have the power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me if it had not been given to you from above. For this reason, the one who handed me over to you has the greater sin. Consequently, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release him, you are not a friend of Caesar. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard this word, he brought Jesus out and seated him on the judge's bench in the place called Stone Pavement, in Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was preparation day for Passover, and it was about noon. And he said to the Jews, Behold, your king. They cried out, Take him away, take him away, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and carried the cross himself, and he went out to what he called the blessed of the scroll in Hebrew, Gophotha, where they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus in the middle. Pilate also had an inscription written and put in the cross. It read, Jesus the Nazarene, the King of the Jews, now many of the Jews read the inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. It was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. So the chief priest of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldier had crucified Jesus, they took it close and divided them into four shares, a share for each of the each soldier. They also took his tunic, but the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top down. So they said to one another, Let's not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it will be. In order that the passage of scripture might be fulfilled, they said, They divided my garments among them. And for my venture, the cast lots did it what the soldiers did, standing, standing by the cross of Jesus, who was his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Cleopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. After they aware that everything was now finished, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst. There was a vessel filled with common wine, so they put a sponge soaked in wine on the strip of his son, and put it up to his mouth. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, It is finished. And bound his head, he handed him handed over the spirit. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Now, since it was a represented day, in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day of that week was a solemn one. The Jews asked Pilate that their legs be broken, and that they be taken down. 
So the soldier came and broke the legs of the first, and then of the other one who were crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs, but one soldier thrust his lens into his side, and immediately blood and water flowed out. At witness, at the witness, what test had testified and his testimony is true. He knows that he is speaking the truth, so that you also may come to believe. For this happened so that the scripture passage might be fulfilled. Not a bone of it will be broken. And again, another passage said, they will look upon him whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, secretly a disciple of Jesus, for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate if he could remove the body of Jesus. And Pilate permitted it. So when he came and took his body, Nicodemus, the one who had first come to him at night, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and armor, weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and bowed it with a bare cloth, along with the spices, according to the Jewish burial custom. Now in the place where he had been crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been buried. So they said Jesus there were they laid Jesus there because of the Jews' preparation day, for the tomb was close by. The gospel of the Lord. We praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Yet it was an infirmity that he bore, our suffering that he endured, while he thought of him as stricken, at once smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our offenses, cursed for our sin. Upon him the chastisement that made us whole, but his strife we were healed. We had all gone astray like sheep. Each fallen his own way, but the Lord laid upon him the guilt of it all. I thirst, it is finished. Were you there when they crucified the Lord Jesus? It is an empty church. Where are the children of our loving God? Where is the Godfather when the Lord Jesus cried out? Why have you forsaken me? My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as we commemorate and enter to the Holy Week, Today we call Good Friday. Why do we call Good Friday? Why don't we call something else? Death is evil. It cannot be good. Then why do we call Good Friday? And where was God the Father why his own beloved son was hanged on the cross, were crucified, hanged on the cross, and die on the cross. Then he listened to his beloved son. Where is God the Father at this time? Why his son was suffering? My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, look at the crucifix of the Lord Jesus and the Lord Jesus hang on the cross. What do you see beyond 
the crucifix of the Lord Jesus. Then in the scripture said, God so loved the world that he only he sent his only begotten son into the world to die for our sin. God the Father is always with his own son in order to manifest, to reveal God's love to his own children, to every one of us. God allow his beloved son to become one of us in everything except sin. When Jesus is suffering on the cross, I'm very sure God the Father is suffering with him. Why do we call Good Friday? Because the word that the Lord Jesus said in today's gospel, the passion of the Lord, I touched. It is finished. The history of our salvation that God manifests to us, to the Lord Jesus, it is good. Through that, through the passion, the suffering and the death of the Lord Jesus and the reason cry, God destroyed all evil. Death can no longer conquer the Lord Jesus. And that's why we call Good Friday. When Jesus said, I thirst, he thirst for every one of us. Come close to him. Pray to him. We all know God is suffering with us. That's why the word compassion meaning is to suffer with. We are suffering from the virus nowadays, the coronavirus. Though God listen to our prayer, though God the Father it listen to our prayer, absolutely yes, God always listen to us. But are we really thirst for the living God in our own life at this time? Are we really listen to God to allow God to work miracle within us? It is time for us to be humble, be on our knees, to ask God to fill our thoughts with the living God. I'm very sure for the last couple of months, every one of us have watched the news or even read the news on the internet. So many health workers wish to come home to be with their family, to hug their own wife or their own husband, to wish to own hug their own children, but they could not do it because they are so afraid to spread the virus to their loved one. What have we done to ask God to help those health workers? We all know the virus will come to the end someday, somehow. We don't know when, except God himself. But we can for one thing, we should never lose our hope in God, no matter what happened in there, out there. Many people die from the virus. And yet, in a way, we are affected by the virus directly or indirectly, some way, somehow. The one thing we can for sure, the Lord Jesus telling us, I thirst for you. Today, I ask you to take time 
and reflect upon the world in today's gospel, I thirst. Are you thirsting for the living God in your own life? What does the meaning of the crucifix in your own life at this moment? Do you impress the crucifix in your own life? Do you treasure the unconditional love that God the Father, God the Son had given to us in our own life? What can we do to unite together to give God thanks and pray? The only thing that lasts is God himself. God love for us and that God salvation for us. Nothing in this on the earth can take away God love for us or God salvation for us. Jesus is willing to die on the cross for us. Don't let Jesus die in vain, but rather truly embrace the Good Friday. God manifest his own salvation he love for every one of us. The passion, the suffering, and the death of the Lord Jesus. And tomorrow evening, we celebrate the risen Christ. That the whole picture that we see. And that's why we continue on our journey of faith. That we trust in God. And no one can deliver us from all evil except God himself. So my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, don't lose hope, but rather put all your faith, all your trust in our loving God. Just like the Lord Jesus said, into your hand, Father, I command my spirit. We too are God's children. We can follow the example of the Lord Jesus, telling God the Father, telling the Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I put my life into your hand. Help me to recognize your presence. Help me to live out my faith and help me to live my life according to your will. Together, we can fight all the evil in life, especially the coronavirus. Together, we can pray for each other during the difficult time in the world, in our nation. Together, we can go out and glorify God by the way we live our own life. Let us go out and proclaim to the whole world, this is Good Friday because Jesus died for our sin. Through his death, his suffering, his death, and his resurrection, we are the Easter people. We rise with Jesus and we live with Jesus. And our hope is in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Let us stand. Let us pray, dearly beloved, for the Holy Church of God, that our God and Lord be pleased to give her peace, to guide her, to unite her throughout the whole world. 
and grant that leading our life in tranquility and quiet, we may glorify God, the Father Almighty. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty, ever living God, who in Christ revealed your glory to all the nations, watch over the works of your mercy that your church, spread throughout all the world, may persevere with steadfast faith in confessing your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us also pray for our most holy father, Pope Francis, that our God and Lord, who chose him for order of bishops, may keep him safe and unharmed for the Lord's holy church, to govern the holy people of God. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty, ever living God, by whose decree all things are founded, look with favor on our prayers and in your kindness, protect the Pope chosen for us, that under him the Christian people, governed by you, their Maker, may grow in merit by reason of their faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us let us pray also for our Bishop Archbishop Aquila and Assistant Bishop of his, for all bishop, priests, and deacon of the church, and for the whole of the faithful people. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty, ever-living God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is sanctified and governed, Hear our humble prayer for your ministers, that by the gift of your grace, all may serve you faithfully through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for the catechumens, that our God and Lord may open wide the ears of their inmost hearts and unlock the gift of his mercy that heaven received forgiveness of all their sin. Through the waters of rebirth, they too may be one with Christ Jesus our Lord. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty, ever living God, who make your church ever fruitful with new offspring, increase the faith and understanding of catechumens that born, reborn in the font of baptism, they may be added to the number of your adopted children through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for all our brothers and sisters who believe in Christ, that our God and Lord may be pleased, as they live the truth, to gather them together and keep them in his one church. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty, ever-living God, who gather what is scattered, and keep together what you have gathered, look kindly on the flock of your Son, that those whom one baptism has consecrated may be joined together by integrity of faith and united in the bond of charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for the Jewish people to whom the Lord our God spoke first, then he may grant them to affect in love of his name and his faithfulness to his covenant. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty, ever living God, who bestowed your promises on Abraham and his descendants, graciously hear the prayers of your church that the people you first made your own may attain the fullness of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for those who do not believe in Christ, that enlightened by the Holy Spirit, they too may enter on the way of salvation. Let us kneel. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, grant to those who do not confess Christ 
that by walking before you with a sincere heart, they may find the truth, and that we ourselves, being constant in mutual love and striving to understand more fully the mystery of your life, may be made more perfect witnesses to your love in the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for those who do not acknowledge God, that following what is right, he sincerely upon, they may find the way to God himself. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty, ever-living God, who created all people to seek you always by desiring you and finding you come to rest, grant, we pray, that despite every harmful obstacle, all may recognize the signs of your fatherly love and the witness of the good works done by those who believe in you, and so in gladness confess you, the one true God and Father of our human race, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also though in public office that our God and Lord may direct their minds and hearts according to his will. For the true peace and freedom of all, let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty, ever-living God, in whose hand lies every human heart and the rights of peoples, look with favor, we pray, on those who govern with authority over us, that throughout the whole world the prosperity of peoples, the assurance of peace, and freedom of religion may, through your gift, be made secure through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray, dearly beloved, to God, Father Almighty, that he may cleanse the world of all the errors, banish disease, dry out hunger, unlock prison, loosen feather, granting to travelers safety to pilgrim return, health to the sick and salvation to the dying. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty, ever-living God, comfort of mourners, strength of all who toil, may the prayers of those who cry out in any tribulation come before you, that all may rejoice because in their hour of need, your mercy was at hand through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray, dearly beloved, for a swift end to the coronavirus pandemic that afflict in our, in our world that our God and Father will heal the sick, strengthen those who care for them, and help us all who persevere in faith. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty and merciful God, source of all life, healing, and strength, Look with compassion on our world brought low by disease. Protect us in the midst of the grave challenges that assail us. And in your fatherly providence, grant recovery to the stricken, strengthen those who care for them, and grant success to those working to eradicate this scourge through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Behold the wood of the cross on which hung our salvation. Behold the wood of the cross on which hung our salvation. Let us come to a floor here.
Behold the wood of the cross on which hung our salvation. Let us come to adore him. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, the kingdom, the kingdom. Uh, in the glory are yours, now and forever. May the receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, do not bring me to judgment and condemnation, but through your loving mercy, be for me a protection in mind and body and a healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall heal.
those of you who are gathered at home and unable to join us in the reception of Holy Communion. We offer this spiritual communion for you and ask that the Lord will continue to nurture and nourish you throughout this holy season. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and desire to serve you in my, into my soul since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. And let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who have restored us to life by the blessed death and resurrection of your Christ, preserve in us the work of your mercy, that by partaking of this mystery, we may have a life unceasingly devoted to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bow our heads and pray for the blessing. May abundant blessing, O Lord, we pray, descend upon your people who have honored the death of your Son in the hope of their resurrection. May pardon come, comfort be given, holy faith increase, and everlasting redemption be made secure through Christ our Lord. Amen. So my dear brothers and sisters, today, Good Friday, I ask you to take time and reflect upon those who were in today's gospel when Jesus uttered from his lips, I thirst, it is finished. Not only that, but I, if you have a Bible, open Psalm 51, read over and over and over again and reflect upon Psalm 51, what does it mean in our life and how do I live out my own faith? And what is the treasure of our faith? Please take time and thank God the Father for his love for us. That's why he sent his only son into the world to die for our sin, but also to grant us our salvation. Please, please take time and reflect upon today from the gospel, the word from the Lord Jesus. I thirst. It is finished. And also from Psalm 51. May God bless you on this day. <laughs>